So this is a quick rundown of the ZCNC plugin for ZBrush 4R8. After you have the plugin installed and you have ZBrush launched, you can navigate to the Z plugin palette at the top here and open this up. And then in here towards the bottom, you'll find the ZCNC tab. I'm just going to dock this to the side quick by coming up here and clicking this icon. Now the ZCNC plugin will allow you to automate some processes inside of ZBrush for use with creating models for CNC milling. If at any time you'd like more information on the features inside of ZCNC, simply click the logo here and this will open up a cheat sheet. In here will contain the information on all the different features contained in the ZCNC plugin. The use of the ZCNC plugin is fairly straightforward. At the top here, you have a material size that you can set in inches. So you can set the length, width, height, and then the maximum cut depth for your material. You can then set the alignment through here, and then you have some additional options you can also change. These additional options will allow you to automate processes inside a ZBrush when the mesh is created. These options in here will allow you to automatically subdivide the mesh that's created. You can also modify the standard brush with certain properties that are useful for CNC creation. You can load an example alpha. You can modify the masking brush for CNC usage. You can apply color to the subtools and then also force the color to be stronger if you're using a red wax matte cap. And then you can also create a secondary guide subtool that will be the inverse of the max cut depth. After you have your settings set, you just simply need to come and click the Create CNC Base Mesh. When you click this icon here, a new tool will be created inside of ZBrush with the above settings. After this is created, if you navigate over your tool palette and open up the subtool panel here, you'll see you have four separate subtools that have been created. The first subtool you'll have selected is the Material Subtool, and this is the tool that you'll be sculpting on for generating your meshes with the ZCNC plugin. If you activate your polyframes, you can see that the mesh is already tessellated and is divided up to around 1.3 million polys. In addition to this subtool, you also have the Max Cut Depth subtool here. And this will allow you to see the cut depth on your material. So as you sculpt on your material, at any time if you sculpt too deep into the surface, you'll expose the Max Cut Depth subtool. As an example of this, if I just switch to the Clay Buildup brush by hitting B, C, B, and now come across my material here and start sculpting by holding down Alt and clicking and dragging, you can see as I sculpt, if I start going too far into the material, I'll start exposing that max cut depth subtool. So this is handy in making sure you do not go beyond the depth of your material. In addition to these two subtools here, at the top you have some placeholders. You have a cube that is set to an inch size, and then you also have another placeholder that's used to lock in the size of the material. In addition to just generating a CNC base mesh, there is also some additional processes you can access. By clicking this button here, this will expose these features. These features will allow you to use masking to generate thickness on your models. As an example of this, I'm just going to come over here and select the Max Cut Depth subtool here, and then I'm just going to click the eyeball icon while holding Shift just to turn off all the subtools except that Max Cut Depth. With this subtool selected, I can zoom in, and now I can apply some masking by holding Control and clicking and dragging. After my masking is applied, I can go back to the ZCNC plugin here, and I can now set a thickness. So I'm going to come over here and click on this and type in 1.5 and then hit enter. After this thickness is locked in, I can now click this masking geometry button. This will take the masking that is on this model and generate a new subtool at this set thickness. So by looking at this masking here and then clicking masking geometry, so now I have a new subtool created and it's generated at that specific height. So this functionality is handy for just coming in and starting to mask on your models to generate different shapes and forms, and then you can convert these to geometry at any time. So just generating your masking on your mesh, clicking masking geometry, and now you'll get a new subtool at that specific height. Now you have some other options that will allow you to switch to the extracted subtool, or also just use the remesher on it to get even topology across the surface. Now that we've covered the basic features of the ZCNC plugin, I'm just going to go through and generate a simple example to show you the process from start to finish. So I'm just gonna close the additional processes. And now I'm just going to go to the More Options tab here and open this up. I'm going to turn on Auto Subdivide Mesh. I'm gonna turn on CNC Standard Brush. I'm gonna turn on Load Example Alpha. And I'm gonna also activate Color Subtools. And now I'm gonna click Create CNC Base Mesh. After this is created, you'll see I should have something like this. So I have my four subtools over here. And some of these now have color being applied to them, so I can easily see them when I'm sculpting on my meshes. 
You can see that the standard brush is now selected. It has drag rectangle active, and I also have the example alpha loaded in. So now I can zoom out a little bit and I can come across the surface of my model and simply click and drag. And this is going to take that alpha and apply it to my model. As you can see here, it has applied the alpha here. And now I have these Escher lizards applied across the surface. Now if I go to the side here and turn on the visibility for the placeholder do not modify subtool, you will see that the material subtool is extending out of the material surface. So since I used the standard brush with this drag rectangle and this alpha, my Z intensity was pretty strong, and it has now taken the geometry and extended it out of the surface of my material. So if I was to CNC this on my machine here, it would not generate correctly, since it is extended farther out than the material. So inside the plugin, underneath the Create CNC Base Mesh button, there is a resize CNC Base Mesh. And this will take any subtool you have selected, and it will resize it to fit into your material. So coming over here and clicking Resize CNC Base Mesh, we'll just apply this action here. And now you'll notice that those lizards are now falling inside of my material. So now I come to my subtool palette again, and I can hide the visibility for that placeholder. And you'll see that now I'm getting this effect in my model. So I've now applied these lizards to the surface. These lizards are also not exceeding my max cut depth. And now I can send this out to be CNC mill. So to send this for CNCing, you can simply go to the tool palette here and go to export to export this out as an OBJ. Or you can use the export options located inside the ZCNC plugin. So down at the bottom, we have export options to allow you to export to Vetric applications in inches or millimeters. So with my subtool selected here for my material, I'm just going to come over to the export area here and click export to Vetric inches. This will open a new window here, and now I can save this out. So I'm going to save this out as lizards and then simply click Save. And this will now just export out the mesh here as an OBJ, and now I can load this into a Vetric application. So the Vetric application I currently have installed is vCarve Desktop, so I'm just gonna switch over to that quick. So here we are in Vetric vCarve Desktop. So I just need to create a new file here. So I'm gonna go to the Startup Tasks and click Create a New File. This is gonna take me to the Job Setup sheet here. And in here, I want to enter the values for my material. So my width is 7.25 inches, height is 24 inches, and my thickness is 0.75. And these values should match the material information that we inputted into the ZCNC plugin inside of ZBrush as well. For my units, I want to make sure this is at inches since I exported the file out in inches. And then I simply just want to come here and click OK. So now that I have a new project here, you should see your material size on the sheet. And now I can go to File, and I can go to Import, and now I can click Import Component slash 3D Model. And now I just need to select the file that I exported out, so the Lizards file, and now I'll simply click Open. And depending on how much topology your mesh has, this could take a little while to import into vCarve. So after this is loaded in, you should get something like this. And so you should see your 3D model sitting on your material. Now in the orientation area over here, you want to go down to this zero plane position and make sure this is set to bottom. This will make sure that it keeps the same height of the mesh as we had in ZBrush, and then you just need to simply hit OK. And now we should get a preview of our tool as what it would look like if it was carved out of wood. So now I can go through and just generate some tool paths for this to feed to the CNC machine for carving. So I'm going to go to this tool paths bar over here and open this up. And then I'm going to click this pin option here to make sure that it doesn't auto hide. In here, I now want to select this 3D roughing tool path option and click this. And I'm going to make sure this is set to model boundary. So I can now select the tool that I want to mill with. And in here, I have a few tools loaded in. So I'm going to select this rough quarter inch uh, ball nose tip here. Just select that one and then hit OK. And now I'm going to click Calculate on that, which will calculate that toolpath. I should get something like this. And I can now preview this by coming over here and clicking this Run button. And this will generate a preview of the result I would get if I milled this out with that quarter inch bit. So you can see this is what the lizards would look like after that roughing path. Now I can add a finishing pass as well. So I can close here. I can now select this 3D finishing toolpath and open this up. I'm going to set this back to the model boundary again. Now I can select the finishing tip here, 
And for this one, I'm going to select a eighth inch tip and then hit OK. And then we're going to calculate that pass as well. And then after that is completed, I can now preview that as well by clicking the Run button here. And after that is processed, this should be the result should get out of my CNC machine. So now I can close this and I can do a calculation of the time here if I'd like by clicking this summary of all toolpath. This will go through and give me an estimate on what those passes would take to finish if it was milled out on my machine. So this is gonna take a, quite a bit of time to mill this out at 24 inches with the current bits I have selected. And then if I close this, I can then also preview this all at once by clicking the preview toolpaths here. Click the reset preview button just to make sure it resets back to the material. And now I can click the preview all toolpaths button here. So this will go with the roughing and then come back through with the finishing and you should get this result. So after you're done with this, you can just save your toolpaths out by coming here and clicking the save toolpath option. And this will allow you to set which toolpaths you want to save out and then also what processor you want to use. I currently have a Xcarve, so I would select the Xcarve option here and then simply do save toolpath. Then I could load that onto my CNC machine and mill this out. So that is the breakdown of using the ZCNC plugin inside of ZBrush to take a model and generate a mesh for CNC carving. And then you can send it to a CNC machine and have it milled out. So once again, at any time, if you'd like more additional information on the usage of the ZCNC plugin, just click on the ZCNC logo here, and this will open up a cheat sheet. And in here will contain information on all the various features that the plugin contains. So that is it for this plugin. Happy ZBrushing!